I feel incredibly savvy right now. Right. <laughs> because I managed to get all of these jokes on sale for Black Friday. <laughs> Anybody go shopping for Black Friday? Did anybody do that? Why? Why did you? Why? I feel bad. I feel bad because you were kind enough to volunteer an answer uh, of affirmative, and I'm actually about to complain about Black Friday. Thank you for participating. Anyway, I hope you continue to do so during the night. So Black Friday makes me so angry. It makes me so angry because Black Friday basically just turns us into flesh, just flesh, just bones, just flesh and skin and mass and flesh and bodies, just flesh, meat, buying plastic. We are, we are just meat buying plastic. And it makes me so angry that we do that and we, we, we trample on each other to get a toaster with four slots. <laughs> and I get that because I'm in a relationship. I get, <laughs> I get why you need a toaster with four slots. Sometimes that can make or break the relationship. <laughs> oh, I'm running late for work. I need to make some toast real quick so I can get on the bus or car, whatever we have. I always forget. I haven't eaten that coffee yet. I need to put some toast in here. Well, I'm sorry. I'm making toast. Why are you making toast? Why are you making toast? You don't even like my parents either. Why am I with you? <laughs> so I get. I get why Black Friday can potentially save some relationships. Now, who? there's something as well that happens before Black Friday. Friday. Does anybody know what that is? You can answer if you want. It's safe this time. Does anybody know what happens before Black Friday? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Right. Let's ah. <laughs> go. So, Thanksgiving. I'm mad at the holiday, not at y'all. Um, so Thanksgiving is, I mean, I know a lot of people, a lot of people celebrate Thanksgiving, but I also recognize that it really is a holiday for us as white people. It is our holiday. It's a time when we can come together and pretend that genocide is really just the search for the perfect cranberry sauce recipe. <laughs> Here's a tip, citrus peel. <laughs> Makes you forget all of it. So Thanksgiving, so Thanksgiving itself is a super stressful time. It's a time when, well, at least I'm only speaking from my own experience, but it's the time when I have to go back to Georgia to a town of 580 people, none of them who are apparently there during Thanksgiving. There's nobody there, there's nothing to do, there's one traffic light in the whole town, and I just watched it turn from red to yellow to green. <laughs> to red. <laughs> to green, skip yellow, <laughs> exciting, exciting. So we had a power shortage. <laughs> so I, I go there, I go back to Georgia, and I get really stressed out because I'm, I'm in my mom's house, and my mom's house stresses me out because she, because she has everything from every decade in there, and she lives by herself, and it's all there, and it's cluttered, and it stresses me out. And so I can go there and do that, but finally, finally we get to the point where we just eat tons of food. We just eat so much. Oh, here's some potato salad. Here's some turkey. Here's some dressing. Here's some hen. Dressing is, is stuffing for us. Uh, here's some hen. Here's some, uh, some chicken. Here's a pie. Here's cake. Here's another cake. Here's a cake inside of a pie. Here's potato salad on top of a turkey. It's amazing. And it didn't slide off because of the turkey. It's like that. <laughs> so we eat this and we finally get to the point where we're feeling okay. I finally start to feel calm because I'm super full. My body is trying to digest 10,000 calories in only two hours because I need to eat again. Because we're going to visit my grandma. So I'm finally feeling okay. And then the alarm goes off and it's time for Black Friday. So I hate Black Friday because I finally get calm enough in Georgia and I have to go do stuff. In a stressful situation. 
In case you're wondering, I know you came to a comedy show. This part, I figured we should just get all the depressing stuff out of the way. <laughs> just right off the bat. Let's just, let's just say everything that's making us sad and angry and depressed. Well, well y'all won't say that. I will say that. But let's just, <laughs> let's just get those things out of the way. Let's try to take it as far down as we could possibly go in the beginning. Let's just try to see how far down the hole of depression and anger and helplessness we can all go right now. So for those of you who may have been paying attention, in January, Donald Trump will be our president. He will be the president of the United States of America, which is where we all live. Which means he is going to lead us all. He's going to lead us all. And he's so confusing, I don't understand how that happened. So, obviously, some of you probably saw the news and stuff leading up to the election because the election started in 1986 when I was five. <laughs> and so everything was leading to this moment and, um, and, and we, we heard a lot of stuff, but Trump never told us what his plan was. He said sentences. I'm going to make America great again. What a great plan. I'm going to do things bigly. Huge things are going to happen. China and walls. This is what I'm going to do. And we didn't question them. We never said, well, what are you specifically going to do? And that's confusing to me. Because let's just imagine, just imagine that in any other situation. So let's say you're driving around in your car, you've had your toast, <laughs> your relationship's okay, so you're driving around, you want to treat yourself for having a good relationship, and you see a Thai restaurant, oh, a Thai restaurant, interesting, and the sign says, best Thai food in the city. You won't necessarily instantly go, although you're very tempted because you are a white person, and we love... We love Thai food. We love Thai food so much. So there's a Thai restaurant, actually, I'll get back to this story. There's, there's a, I just remembered, there's a Thai restaurant near where I, where I live, and I, w I went in there recently, and the, the person uh, came up to me, the person who worked there, and I said, uh, table for one. Um, no, I'm in a relationship. Table for one, they didn't need to know that. And so they took me to the table, and I thought, when is a good time to express my condolences on the death of their king? When, when can I say, I'm really sorry your king died? Now is not a good time because they've selected a new king. So, But yes, as a white person, I feel, for some reason, very connected to Thailand. It makes no sense to me. So, right, so you see the Thai restaurant, and it says, best Thai food in the city. You don't just go in there. What do you do? You go online. You look at Yelp. You see how other people have reviewed the place. You look at uh, what diners have experienced in the past. You look at the menu. That, of course, they don't have one online, so somebody took a picture on their shitty phone, and it's up there, and you have to scroll through like five pages, and you're not even sure if that's the right menu. So you look at that. But we didn't do that for Donald Trump. But we would do that for our Thai food. And I understand that. <laughs> In some way. And, and what's confusing as well is he, he doesn't, he clearly doesn't know what he's doing. He's, I, I'm going to say this, I don't think this is a brave thing to say, but he's a moron. He... <laughs> He is an, he's an idiot, and the problem is that he's an idiot now in power. He's an idiot who just says whatever he wants without consequence, without thought. Well, it's going to have consequence, but he has no thought to consequence. And I don't think he quite understands reality. So let's just think about some of the people that he, he is, is choosing to solve some of the world's issues. So Donald Trump are soon to be president. I keep saying that because, like I said, we're going to try to get as depressed as possible in the beginning. But I was all that in January, that's going to happen. So Donald Trump said, I have a son-in-law, and he's called Jared Kushner. 
And I think Jared Kushner, because he's Jewish, even though he has no diplomatic skills or background, I think he can solve the conflict between Israel and Palestine. I think he can do that. And I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense that that would be his, his choice, because he also recently, you might have heard this, it was a little, a little blurb um, on some of the sites that I read, uh, he's also picked Scott Baio <laughs> to <coughs> resolve race issues in the country. <laughs> Charles in charge of other days and nights. This is actual audio. <laughs> Charles in charge of the blacks and the whites. And then the clip stopped. My page was buffering. It's just, it's, it's just confusing to me. And, and, What's so tough? I mean, a lot of us, I think, I think a lot of us were, were shocked the day after the election. And a lot of us were feeling similarly. I, I know that I, when I read the news, I thought, how? How am I going to look my dog in the eye <laughs> and explain what just happened? He already doesn't trust me. Uh, Burnley? Uh, Burnley? Burnley, come here. Burnley, come, come here. Do you want a treat? I thought so. Sit. Burnley, sit. Burnley, sit. Sit down. Sit. Look at me. Yep. Look at me. Burnley. Look at me. Come here. You want a treat? <laughs> Sit. <laughs> Burn stay. Burnley. I don't really know how to say this. Look at me. Burn, look at me. <laughs> Donald Trump is going to be our president. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> how do you, how, first of all, how can you speak? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, but that was good. <laughs> Got that one. Right, look at me. No, look at me. How, how do you know that? I've been watching the news, Dad. <laughs> well, the news? What do you... What do you want? What do you mean? What what news? What news do you watch? PBS. <laughs> PBS. You so you watch PBS? Yes. The puppy bark casting system. <laughs> <laughs> Got me there. I did not see that one coming. <laughs> I had no idea. Do we do we even get that station? I'm not sure that we, we even get that. Yeah. Yeah, we get it. Oh what? What station is it? Well, for you it's five, for me it's 35. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem uh, with telling my dog this is clearly, clearly he knows. I mean, he's obviously informed. And it, it was just tough. It was just tough to tell him that when he's already scared. He's already scared of the world. And now Donald Trump is going to be our president. Now, if you might remember what happens, those of you who are into politics, what happens when we elect a president is we also elect a vice president. And if you're not aware of this, we now have a vice president, or we're going to have a vice president. We, I mean, we have one. There's also a vice president elect. And that man is Mike Pence. Mike Pence, of course, you know, believes in gay conversion therapy. And for a while, Mike Pence and I were in agreement. Until I learned it wasn't to convert people to become gay. <laughs> because that makes sense to me. 
And we, we've already had pilot programs. I mean, if you remember the reality series Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, I mean, it seemed to work. It seemed to work for people. Oh, hey, straight guy, what is that, a backwards hat? What are you doing? You are terrible. Is anybody wearing a backwards hat? <laughs> you are back in the joke. You, what are you doing? What is that, a bagel bite with mustard on it? What? No, no, look, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, we know you can't help being hetero. But just come on, just come on over here. And I'm sure some of the people in the show lapsed back into heterosexuality, but that's okay. I'll pray for them. But I won't. <laughs> Actually, pray for them. So, the election, if you'll remember as well, uh, was all about, you know, let's take our country back. Let's make America great again. We, it's time for white culture again. It's time for our culture to be lifted up. And my question, the instant question that comes to mind for me is, whatever happened to white guilt? Like, for me, that was a part of my culture growing up, white guilt. I know it wasn't, it's not a productive thing, obviously. It's a way for us to deflect blame for things that happened in the past. But I feel like I grew up with the right amount of crippling social guilt <laughs> to inhibit me from infringing on, on the rights of other people. I mean, I if I cut somebody off in traffic, I will let the next 15 people <laughs> get ahead of me. So I'm just wondering whatever happened to that. Now, stay with me for these next few minutes. <laughs> or don't. Well, do whatever you have to do. <laughs> I don't want it. I'll feel guilty if you leave, but we already know that's my life. So it used to be that as, as a white person, we would feel bad about the things that we have done in our lives. Oh, you're a Native American. First of all, didn't know you were still here. That's kind of crazy. Um, wow, I guess, wow, okay, uh, I, can I just say that I'm so sorry, I am so, I am so, so sorry, I feel so bad that we came here, we left our place because we didn't like the church we were in, we came here and, yeah, we exchanged recipes and then gave you quilts and you died, and, and then and those of you who didn't die, which apparently there are some of you, we thought we'd, we'd done everything, um, those of you who didn't die, that's appropriate, your response is appropriate, uh, those of you who didn't die, uh, we said, we're going to give you, look, see this shitty land here, that is all yours, well no, we're not taking you there, you need to walk there, you need to walk there, and then you can stay there, oh, it's, uh, actually, yeah, we found some oil, so maybe you could just, no, it's okay, I mean, we're going to put stuff through there anyway. But I feel bad about that. No, don't, I don't want to shake your hand, but, but I will, I will, I will take those moccasins, please, thank you. <laughs> Christmas is coming up, Black Friday. <laughs> so we used to feel bad about that. I'm not saying, again, white guilt is not productive, but we used to feel responsible in some way, and then, and then, you know, we would see, Okay, again, bear with me for <laughs> these next few minutes. We would see a black person, and in some ways we feel like, like we should brag a little bit. So it's like, hey, you know, we came to a country and killed people. We did that already. So for you, we're doing you one better. We came to your place. We came to your home, took you here, and then killed you. So there you go. You're welcome. But I feel, I feel bad about it. And we used to feel bad about stuff like that. And I don't understand, I don't understand this movement, this idea that that is all in, in the past. I, I feel like, I feel like guilt is, even though a new order would say guilt is a useless emotion, I feel like it is useful and sometimes because it's the start of starting to recognize that you have done something, you have done something for which you should try to make amends. There's, there's something that you could do. That's not the end of the show. Not <laughs> easily could be. It will be the end of my career. So you bared with me these last little bits. Um, so I feel like I have, I have said things, I've expressed my opinion. So now it's your chance to talk 
to me in a game, everyone's favorite game show. Come on, you can say it with me. Who wants to be a heckler? That's right, let's play Who Wants to Be a Heckler? Theme music, theme music. This is the portion of the show where I regret everything I've just said because I give members of the audience free reign to hassle me. So, for this segment, just to explain a little bit about how it works, I have five cards in my hand. These cards will allow you to heckle me. So, I will pick five volunteers from the audience. You can get this card. I'm going to come back up here after dispensing those cards. I'm going to stand here. Um, I may say some other things. But then I'm going to start telling a joke. And during that joke, those of you who have cards can raise your card, and I'll call on you, and you can heckle me during this next segment. So, I, I do ask, who wants to be a heckler? Raise your hand, who wants to be a heckler? Anybody, oh, okay. If each of the hecklers could raise your card, so I see where you're at, perfect. Um, now I'm gonna have uh, each of you, the, what's written on there is absolutely meaningless, so don't read anything into it. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna have each of you read those out loud. We'll start over here. Uh, what does your card say? Ice, ice, echo, two gold. Whoa, nice. <laughs> Showing my age. Uh, <laughs> You're, wait, real quick though, I did see Vanilla Ice in the Atlanta airport once, and I, it was back when I had the disposable camera, and I obviously disposed of it since then. <laughs> and I, I tried to take a picture of him, and somebody walked in the way, so you could only see like this of him. <laughs> and I still point that picture out to people, because my life is sad. The Heckles Foundation. Oh, the Heckles Foundation, a local organization. You might have seen their recent Heckles Theater downtown. The giant plasma screen TV. Uh, yes. What does your card say? Uh, heckled Ginger. Ooh, Heckled Ginger. Nice. I'd like to put some of that in my fried rice. Heckleberry tea. Heckleberry tea. Straight from Montana. <laughs> and then one more. There's always room for Heckle-O. Oh, there's always room for Heckle-O. <laughs> okay, so, like I said, I'm going to start telling a joke. During the course of this joke, those of you who have Heckle cards, Raise your hand if you want to heckle me, and I will stop what I'm doing, which is very important, and I will call on you, and you can feel free to heckle me. Now, after I've resolved the heckle, I need to add this. Another heckler, feel free. Feel free to raise your card. Um, let's see what happens. The joke begins now. A lot of you are familiar with the band Lips Incorporated. <laughs> Lips Incorporated, of course, wrote the song Funky Town. Won't you take me to Funky Town? Won't you take me to Funky Town? So they wrote this song. What a lot of you don't know, there are a few things, and I want to tell you a little bit about Lips Incorporated tonight. So Lips Incorporated had tons of members in the band. So there was Donnie Lips, uh, James Lips, yes! No, no! <laughs> Oh yeah, what, what would you like to heckle me? What is your heckle? Are you just reading from the card? <laughs> That's fine. I prepared for that. Yes? Joey, why don't you take your liberal agenda back to Georgia where it belongs? That's a very <laughs> Two things about that. Um, <laughs> about that. 
I, I hate that that got the biggest laugh of the night. <laughs> Two, this is just the kind of discrimination that Lips Incorporated faced, which brings me back to my story. So Lips Incorporated, yes. I wish I was at a Lips in show right now. Oh, you do? Nice. I think we all do. Uh, there's actually, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling all the money that's donated tonight, and I'm going to buy a coupon for all of us. <laughs> So Lips Incorporated, it was Don Lips, James Lips, Sarah, yes? I wish you would have explained the stretch more clearly. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. The, the heckle system, it's pass, not pass. So if, if, you if you don't get the heckle right the first time, just try it again. That, and for those of you not in the know, uh, Western Governors University has a pass, not pass system. Um, there you go. There's no need to explain. <laughs> it actually killed the momentum. <laughs> Which lips I incorporated also had momentum for a while after that song. So uh, Don, James, uh, Sarah, Victoria, Luz, uh, Dustin, uh, Mark. These were all members of Lips Incorporated. And after that song, they were asked to perform on cruise ships. Oh, they have finally made it. The disco cruise ship? Who doesn't want to go on that? It sounds great. So they started performing on cruise ships. So they went to their first cruise and they were, they were singing their song, you know, Funky Town. And then the ship sank. <laughs> it went under. Fortunately, a few people died. But fortunately, the members of Lips, yes? It sank like this uh, set is sinking. <laughs> That is an amazing, yes, that's an amazing uh, observation. It is very similar to that. I'm glad that we can all relate. So basically what, what's happening to me happened to this vessel, this vessel that was meant to, to guide through the ocean just like I'm meant to make it through, yes? My funky family is talking about you. <laughs> Yes, the song, I believe, came out in 1980, but they knew a, a year later uh, a boy would be born who was so funky that he would need his own town. So, so it, it's safe, and fortunately, Lips Incorporated managed to get to all the life rafts, so they made it, they made it to shore. And, you know, people were a little suspicious what's happening, I don't know. Um, but they were invited, again, to perform on a cruise ship. So they were performing on the cruise ship, and everything was going fine. And then the ship, the ship started to sink again. So the ship sank again. More people died this time because they weren't expecting it after last time. <laughs> Fortunately, the band made it. Yes? Uh, how many people in the crowd will live through this set? <laughs> Let's see. There are, how many people are here? A hundred? About a hundred? That's, that's fine. Did you say you need a lifeboat? I can't help you. I, I've climbed in and punctured my own. So, with a homemade ship made of band-aids. So, right, so they make it off of this second ship, and now the police, not the band, the, the actual the uniformed officers start making an investigation into what is happening. And, yes? Don't bring the police in this. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sting's solo career. I could relate. I could relate to it. Yes, right. So, uh, so yes. So the uniformed officers start investigating. There are people there in trench coats. Yeah. Blue lives matter too, though, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Blue, blue lives matter. Yes, because everybody don't kill cartoon characters is what I always say. <laughs> Which you can do with a careless spill of a cup. Would you plan on having after set and no jokes? <laughs> I have, and we'll be doing that half later. <laughs> There's nothing in that mug. <laughs> So, so they launch an investigation and they start questioning the members of Lips Incorporated. Uh, Don Lips, did you do it? No, I didn't. And they didn't see any evidence that he did. Victoria Lips, did you do it? No, there was no evidence that she did. Timothy Lips, no, no evidence that he did. Gertrude Lips, no. And then they came to lose. 
Lose. What? What did you do? And they found evidence. They found evidence and they arrested her. They arrested her. And so the headline the very next day, Lose Lips Sink Ships. <laughs> Inside, just a little bit. <laughs> meaner than I thought it would be. <sighs> so I feel like after that, I feel like we've developed a bond, and I feel like it's probably safe to talk about abortion now. <laughs> because you can't hate me any more than you already do. So Texas is in the news once again because Texas is basically the racist, sexist member of your family who keeps threatening to move out but never does and you really just wish they would. Texas, just leave. Just go. We don't need you. If you're from Texas, the end. I can apologize to you for your state. So Texas... Of course, they tried to, to put restrictive, well, actually, they did uh, put restrictive um, restrictions on abortion, and then that was overturned. And so now they're saying, okay, if you're going to have an abortion, then you're going to have to have an abortion funeral. And a few things come to mind when I, when I, when I think of that. First of all, and I, I just have some practical questions. So first of all, what do I wear? to an abortion funeral. Is it, I'm just, I'm, is it formal? Is it, is it semi-formal? Um, I mean, I've been to funerals before, but I, I just don't, I don't know the protocol. I also wonder, so I, like I said, I'm, I'm from Georgia, and we have food afterward, after funerals. So I'm just wondering, will there, will there be food served? Obviously some things you want to shy away from, baby carrots. <laughs> Little Smokies. <laughs> Eggs of any kind. What kind of egg dish? So I'm just curious because I don't I don't know how these works. And then and, and then I'm also curious because I just wonder, so okay, we're I'm going to an abortion funeral. Will it be open casket? <laughs> open jar? <laughs> I appreciate everything that's happening right now. <laughs> because this is exactly how you should be feeling. Because people in Texas are saying that we have to have abortion funerals. And we should be groaning at this. Because that is a reality. If you're going to make a law, then you have to think about ridiculous things that are going to happen. And I think at this point, since. We've gone down the road of abortion. I think it's time for me to step off stage for a second. I feel like I, feel like I need to take a, a quick break, let everything sink in, if you will. Because honestly, right now, obviously it's clear that I'm pretty angry about stuff. Um, I have opinions. <sighs> And I'm not really sure what the future holds, but I have a friend. I have a friend who has a sense of what might be coming for us. So I want to bring him to stage right now. Please give it up for one of my, one of my best friends, world's foremost observational comic, Tom Foreman. Tom Foreman, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for such a wonderful introduction. For those of you who don't know me, which should be no one, <laughs> my name is Tom Foreman. I'm, in fact, the world's foremost observational comic. And for those of you who've seen me before, um, I'm not sure who. I mean, I'm not that at all. 
<laughs> For those of you who've seen me before, you realise I, you know, I've, I've been the world's foremost observational comic for, for a long time. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a while. I made it to the top very quickly, very quickly. Um, and I've been a little depressed, honestly. For those of you who saw me last time, you realise I'm, I don't know what to do next because I've done it all when it comes to observational comedy. I am, of course, the world's foremost observational comic. There's only one way to get there, and that's to be the foremost in the world. <laughs> so I have no challenges. I could potentially try to become the universe's foremost observational comic. But my fear is that life will be discovered and there will be an observational comic somewhere out there in the universe. <laughs> and I don't want to do that because it's like, you know, it's like you sat at the head of the table and then someone comes up and they're like, no, actually, you're not the guest of honor. You've got to sit over there. And I don't know. <laughs> you were top or nothing. So I tried my hand last time. Those of you who saw me, I tried my hand at impressions. And I did really well. I was very good at that. I don't want to say I was the world's foremost impressional comic, but I was close, meaning right there. I was it. I was it. I'll say it. I'm, I'm the world's. <laughs> most impressional comic, but I did want to do that for you tonight, because, you know, you've got an impression of the way the world is, but what you need, I think, is a little, a little bit of hope tonight, and so I've recently discovered, and I should have seen this coming, that I have psychic abilities, <laughs> and so what I'd like to do tonight is, since we're all not sure what's happening in the world, you know, we've just gone through a crazy election where I'm from, you know, and Rodrigo Duterte is now a president. Because <laughs> <laughs> I am from the Philippines. I, I was born there, I was raised there, grew up there, been around different places. So, yes, yeah, so things are crazy for us, and so I think we need to know what is happening in the future. So, tonight, what I'd like to hear is I'd like you to tell me something you'd like to know the future of. Now, there's another caveat here. Not caveat in poor. Is that even how it goes? I don't know that. Um, I can pinpoint the future to a very specific time frame. So let's say, let's say you want to know the future of cabbage in 14 days. I can do that. You want to know the future of a car that you've been driving. You want to know its future in two years. I can do that. So, tonight, please, somebody tell me what you want to know the future of, and I'll, I'll do that for you. I'll tell you that future. Just shout it out. Cars. Cars. Excellent. So you want to know the future of cars? What time frame? How far in the future? Fifty years. No, so I have fifty. What else did I hit? A hundred. So we'll do. So we'll split it down the middle. We'll do fifty. <laughs> so the future of cars in fifty years. So in fifty years, and I see this very clearly. I see this very clearly. Cars will operate mainly on tiny sprockets, and those sprockets will be made at a factory. Now, there's going to be some unrest at this factory. I want to tell you a little bit about this so you can prepare yourself. There's going to be some unrest at the factory. And things are going to go berserk. And things are going to start breaking down. So we're going to think, oh no, the cars can't be made anymore. But then we're going to realize there are these cute little aliens that maybe we've been destroying their home world. And finally, a man named George is going to save us all. He's going to say, Judy, Elroy, <laughs> I've got to go save the future of cars. And he's going to get in his car. And he's going to save the sprocket making factory. Now that's I see I see that very clearly. So I, I wanna I think we can all agree that that is the future of cars. Now what's 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 something else you want to know the future of? Women's basketball. Women's basketball. <laughs> How far in the future do you want to know this? 
10 years. Are you sure <laughs> you wouldn't prefer 11 years? <laughs> Split the difference 50 years later. <laughs> Women's basketball, it would be very interesting. So basketballs in 50 years will be made out of these little things called sprockets. <laughs> Bring Joseph back up here. My name is Tom Gorman. Thanks for that. <laughs> Thanks for keeping it going for Tom Gorman, everybody. Let's hear it for Tom Gorman. I was listening backstage. Those were some insightful questions. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking to myself that they were so insightful, I needed to jot them down. So I started talking to my diary, and everything was a diary that was floating above me. It wasn't even that long ago that he made that reference. So I think it's about, I think I heard a yawn in that pause. <laughs> I heard of like a stretching yawn. <laughs> That's amazing. So I think um, probably what we should do, so I, like I said, um, no, I don't want to make that transition. That's stupid. Um, trust me, it was going to be stupid. And if I, if, you, if you've learned anything about me tonight, if I have stopped something from coming out of my mouth, it's probably for the best. <laughs> So some of you know that I am also um, one, I guess 50% really, of a band called Joey Cooper and the Starfish. Um, so I think, I'm just trying to interpret what that meant. I think it's enthusiasm. I think it's enthusiasm, right, for the name, or rec our name, name recognition. Okay, cool. Um, so I am, I am in a band called Joey, Joey Cooper and the Starfish, and I think what I'd like to do is play a song for you, if that's okay. Is that okay? Yeah. My goal, clearly, in making these transitions is to wait until people stop clapping and then move off stage. <laughs> so, uh, the problem, the problem is I didn't actually prepare any songs tonight. Um, <laughs> So, I think I'm going to need, I think I'll need a topic to sing about. What should I sing about? Tinker Toys. Tinker Toys. What are Tinker Toys, by the way, real quick? Is that like a, what are Tinker Toys? Wait, is that the thing where you insert the thing in the, the little, oh god, I don't even know what they are. Okay, fine. Uh, so, so Tinker Toys is the topic. Now, what, what style of music? Uh, should I play? Well, oh, that's good because that's one of the two styles that I know. <laughs> Folk and punk. Those are the only two. Oh, I know that would be funny. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Okay, this is a punk song about Tinker Toys. <laughs> Cause they don't believe in it 
not a day at home school. That just, that was what rhymed. That's the only thing. That's not. Take that toy. It was in her hand. And I said, hey, mom, I'm going to take these two sticks and start a band. And she said, there's already a band called Sticks. It was a band of my generation. I said, mom, don't tell me that. Now I need consolation. I'll go to my take a toy for my consolation. That song was called Don't Tinker With My Freedom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can only go down from here. Just kidding. We're at the bottom. <laughs> But I'm gonna I'm gonna slow it down just so we get just so we feel something emotional. What um can I have another topic? Haggis. Haggis? <laughs> Perfect. I can definitely sing an emotional song about haggis. <laughs> Table. 
she said, what's the meaning of this? Oh, what's the meaning of this? Don't you know? Don't you know? I don't eat meat. God damn it. Why? Why? Grocery guy? You did me wrong. So I said, hold on. Sit right here. I won't be long. And she did. So I went back to the store, which was somehow still open. <laughs> they had odd hours, which was what I was hoping. <laughs> and I said, hey man, you gotta, you gotta back this. She don't eat meat, he said. That's okay, look over here, I got vegetarian haggis. <laughs> Stuffed into Berkey's body, it was stuffed into Berkey's mind. And I said, I don't care what's in it as long as there ain't no meat, that's fine. Then I took it back and I impressed that person who had come over for dinner. And I'm here to admit to all of you, vegetarian haggis is quite a dinner, yeah. I love this kid. And my partner looked me deep in the eye, and you know what they did. They said, let's name this child Vegetarian Haggis. Vegetarian Haggis. Oh, Vegetarian. I gotta draw the line. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was <laughs> that were <will> regrettable. <laughs> Basically, out of water. So I appreciate all of you coming with me so far tonight. I appreciate that. Um, I promised I would say this at one point to somebody who's here in the audience, but I love the color blue so much. I love the color blue. I don't know if you, yes, perfect reaction. <laughs> look back down. <laughs> Just look away. So, so my, my goal for tonight, obviously, whatever, you can judge later, uh, was to, to, to have us all uh, laugh together before the world ends in January. <laughs> But I also, I, I, want to, I want to spend these last few few moments um, just talking a little bit about my, my trip to Georgia. So like I said, I went back to, to Georgia for, for Thanksgiving. Um, and, and going back there is really weird because I grew up in a town of, of 500 people. I, I worked at the Quality Food Mart, uh, which is the only, it used to be the only grocery store in town. But we recently got the competition of the Dollar General. And the Dollar General, um, yeah. It's basically got everything you need. We, we, we never had bagel bites at the quality food mart, so uh, whatever. Um, you know, the city's growing up before my eyes. There was also, there, there's a place in, in town called Maybox. Uh, it's the only restaurant. It was named of the owners. Uh, they blended their names, Mary and Barbara Ann, so they called it Maybobs. Now, the thing about Maybobs, it's definitely not healthy food or necessarily good food, so you know, when you go, you're like, okay, what can I eat of this that I'm not going to instantly die? I'll just get a, I'll get a BLT. Okay, well that comes with a, that comes with a side of a vegetable. Okay, well let me just see what vegetable um, I'll get here. So let me just look down the menu. Okay, you got that black-eyed peas. That's great. You got green beans. Uh, you, you got, you got potato salad listed here <laughs> under vegetables, <laughs> which I guess are you putting what are you, are you putting any celery in there? Maybe I don't know. And then, oh, nice! This is great. This is perfect. You have macaroni and cheese listed <laughs> under vegetables. I guess I'll do that. I guess that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. 
so that's 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 what I grew up with. That's that's what I what I went back to uh, for for Thanksgiving. And there's there was nobody there. There was nothing to do. I got to see a couple of my friends, um, and and it was strange because so really now my, my family pretty much consists of me, my brother Timmy, who is in a lot of ways the exact opposite of me. He's cool. He's athletic. He can fix things. He has a tan. Uh, <laughs> He still has the southern accent, um, so so I got to see him and my mom and then my mima, uh, Emma Francis Blessed, who is 91 years old, which she constantly told me. Uh, <laughs> she just kept saying over and over, "I'm 91 years old." I know, mima. I wish you happy birthday. Anyway. So. You know, it, it, that's kind of basically the family we have now, um, and, and we hang out, and we, we, had, uh, we had dressing, uh, which was a little dry. I told my mom, you should pour more stuff in there, but she didn't listen to me. Uh, we had a potato salad, which was great, so we, we were already two vegetables, so that's excellent. <laughs> my mom doesn't really care for turkey or ham, so she makes hen every year, um, so that was, that was good. Then we had a 7-Up cake, which was amazing, another vegetable. Um, <laughs> So we had that, and then you know, my my Mima is in the nursing home now in in Tombsboro, Georgia, which is not not really the place you want to put a nursing home. <laughs> it's got tombs in the name. It's just it just feels wrong to me. So so she's there. So we go there to to spend some time with her, and, and we we bring her back to the house. And and it's it's a little tough. Uh, for me these days, so so you know we've had some death in our family. Um, my both of my mom's sisters have died. Uh, two of my stepdads have died. I'm, and 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 uh, and Mima though somehow at 91 is is outliving uh, everyone in the family. And, and but it, it's tough. It's tough when I when I go back um, because I the, the strong woman who's been a part of my life but since I've been alive is in in some ways. She's in some ways dying in front of me, um, and that's that's kind of tough to watch um, to see somebody who had such such energy was such a big part of everything um, to just slowly kind of fade away. And, um, and like I said, she just kind of keeps repeating stuff these days. But it, it really it really means a lot what she says. You know, I'm 91 years old. That, that one doesn't mean as much um, because I knew that I have a calendar. But you know, she says things like. I love you. You're my heart. You and you and Rita and Timmy. You're my family. And and, and it, just thinking about that, it's so it's so simple. Um, and I think right now, where we are in our in our lives in our country, I, I hope I hope at some point that we can all think about Nemo. <laughs> First of all, she would love that. She would think that's hilarious. And then she would forget what I told her. But I, I hope we can kind of think about that. And I, I hope that at some point we can potentially look at each other. And I'm, I'm, I'm different from her in a lot of ways. She would never get up here and talk about abortion. Um, um, so I'm different from her, but, but she still loves me. And I, and I hope that at some point we can get to the point where, where we recognize that we are all uh, different from each other in so many ways, but that, that we can look at each other and say, I, I love you. Uh, you. You are, in some ways, my heart. Um, and, and I hope that... Um, I hope that we can all take some time over the next, especially four years, and just ask questions of each other and actually listen to one another and try to do something uh, together rather than separately. Thank you so much for being here tonight.